Brew Remix are here with beer. With beer. We're going to make it clear. Make that it is clear. beer. It's beer. It's, uh, what is this here? This is Meteor Shower. The Meteor Shower. Uh, by Ghostfish Brewing Company, a local Seattle based brewing company. That's right. Here in Seattle, Washington. Have I said Seattle enough? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's Seattle, by the way. Seattle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Seattle. Seattle. So uh, this here is a blonde ale that we're drinking today. Now, once again, I am not a connoisseur. I do not have a refined palate as much as my Bohemian bro Matt here does. How uh, fantastic of you, sir. I'm yeah, yeah. mm, with you. It's very, very gracious of you. Oh, yeah, bro. Mm, yes. Mm. So let's hop to it. Oh, oh this is terrible. <laughs> How about well, funny? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh. Yes. You'll be happy to watch on the bottom later. Mm, that I shall. Uh, so we got a blonde ale here. Now, tell me, Matt, uh, you do drink a lot of different types of beers. I do. What should we expect from a blonde ale normally? Sure. Okay. So a blonde ale, I would say, similar to uh, a lager or similar to a lighter ale, like a pale ale, as far as the actual body of it. But it's going to be uh, almost more hinting toward a citrusy or a hoppiness that a lot of IPAs have, because okay. the blonde is a bit more well-rounded. It's a bit brighter of a flavor, but again, lighter, not as heavy as like a stout or a porter or even like a deeper dark ale. It's definitely lighter than that and noticeably more refreshing and drinkable, but they do tend to have some of the more hoppy notes to them. Okay, so hoppy, refreshing, light. Uh, so would you say this is something that would be able to be enjoyed on a hot summer day? Oh, I would say absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Now, that being said, I think it would be best enjoyed on a hot day or a cold day with hot food in a nice warm environment. Like it's cold outside, but you're or cold outside and you're inside. You got a nice hot fire. You got some nice hot food cooking. And you're combining that with a, uh, a good flavor palette. Okay. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that this is actually a gluten free beer, uh, which I. I mean, it kind of makes sense nowadays with the, the gluten allergies and the, the, the is it celiacs or celiacs? Uh, celiac. Celiac. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, for those who are suffering from celiac disease or, or even because of Crohn's too? Um, you know, that that's a good question. I haven't heard that specifically. It, it may or may not. Um, okay. But I can tell you that for sure, if you have anywhere between a gluten sensitivity to a gluten allergy to having full on, you know, celiac disease, then it is going to affect you and it is going to be a, a negative impact and make it make you not want to drink beer, basically, essentially, um, and, and or make you just geared towards ciders, which the, there are now quite a few companies, and some of them are kind of exclusively gluten-free companies here that specialize in 100% gluten-free beers using 100% gluten-free ingredients, and that's really the difference. It's not actually the brewing process or doing all these things differently. It's just using completely gluten-free ingredients and then an extra enzyme in the filtration process, and, and that's where they come up with the gluten-free beer. And obviously, yeah, like you were mentioning, not as popular years ago. Not as many people were in tune with it or knew about it or were even caring about gluten and anything. And uh, now they are. So now it's so, important to a lot of people. I'm going to read the ingredients on here. Ooh. Malted millet, which mm. is a grouse malting. Malted rice, which is an Eckert malting. Hops and yeast. That's it. Very simple. Yeah. Very simple. Absolutely. Uh, and apparently this won some kind of ribbon at the Great American Beer Festival. Could have been the blonde ribbon. Uh, 2017 GABF Silver. So silver. We got silver. I owe silver. All right. So, with that being said, shall we uh, crack it? Silver metal, silver can. Silver can, there we go. I think, why the silver not? Oh, oh, look at that, yes. Yeah, you got some foam coming right up there. I got a little bit of foam in it, so. And of course, it does smell like that normal beer. It does, it does, yep. Uh, has that kind of effervescent, bright. Effervescent. Yes, yes. It yes. definitely smells like a, a domestic beer, a craft beer of some kind. It, it actually, because it kind of reminds me almost of a Budweiser. Mm, sure. Yeah, I get and a little bit of that note, too. I think that's the rice. The rice, exactly. Yeah. Precisely. Because a Budweiser, true to life Budweiser, is a rice beer. So when you get that first initial kind of foamy note there, definitely yeah. reminiscent of Budweiser. But uh, hopefully the taste will be a little bit more impressive. Right. Bottoms up. Bottoms up, sir. Ooh, yeah. Really fun. Yeah. Okay. Foams up pretty good in the mouth. It does. Ooh. I like the really sweet finish that it's got there. It definitely has kind of a bold flavor, and it uh, kind of shines right through the center of it, kind of hits a high note, and then really finishes with a smooth, interesting uh, uh, aftertaste there. What are you getting off of it? Well, I'm trying to figure out if the taste that I'm getting is also reminiscent of the uh, buffalo cheez-its that I had earlier. Oh, oh. But okay, sure. 
it does kind of cut through that. So now I'm, I'm getting it here. Yeah. Definitely getting that maltiness on the very, very last bit of the flavor note. So I've found that I myself was actually a fan of a little bit of maltiness, uh, mm -hmm. especially from that uh, the scotch ale. The scotch ale, the Pike's Brewing. Yeah. That was your favorite of all the scotch ales that you tried out of them yeah. all, hands down. So the fact that this has maltiness to it is very nice. It's also, as you said, to expect it to be a little bright, so I'm looking for those bright notes. And it sits on the tongue very well. It does, right? It does, yeah. It doesn't come at you as intensely or brightly as an IPA would, but it's noticeable, and then it's smooth and crisp, and then finishes with that that kind of malted note. Yeah, it has a little bit of a sting to it. Like, not a bad sting, just right, like right. that, 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 that fermentation zip. zip. Yeah. yeah, exactly. A little bit of a sharpness. But in a good way. It's actually, this is rather enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would definitely agree, yeah. And definitely very drinkable. The more I sip on it, the more those flavors kind of blend together, and, and uh, even the sharper notes tend to be smoothed out just as it continues yeah, just, to hit the palate. It rounds it out at the end. Yeah, 100% it does, yeah. I'd say this would go to a hot dog. Mm. Ooh, hell yeah. Hot dogs, chips, fries, even barbecue. I feel like this would be a nice, good barbecue, yeah, barbecue. kind of beer. Yeah, really yeah, this, this to me screams like red meat or barbecue mm. Mm -hmm. because it's so light, because it's so crisp. Yeah. You can pair it with barbecue chicken. Good. Because you got the barbecue flavor. True. But without it, I, I don't think it would go as well with chicken. Just yeah. because you have the light flavor of the chicken, you got the light flavor of the beer, you kind of want something to balance that out. Right. Yeah. True enough. So, I mean, like a good steak, good hot dog, good, See that working. good burgers. Yeah. 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 Ribs. Some ribs. Ribs. Yeah. It might be better than the hot dog anyway because uh, <coughs> you're throwing bones there and you kind of defeated your gluten free purpose, haven't you? Yeah. You're going to kill two birds but then take in one stone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> ah, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Oh, it's totally foamy. Like whatever I take, it, it, it's if you let it sit in your mouth, it becomes starts to become more foam than beer. Mm, interesting. Yeah, it's reacting with his nuclear mouth mm -hmm. enzymes. It's good though. Yeah, you know, To be honest, this would be a beer that I would recommend to people, even if they don't have a gluten. Yeah. Sensitivity. Yeah. If they're not offended by gluten at all, yes. Yeah. Right. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> they're not offended by gluten. They don't love gluten. They don't hate gluten. They don't care about gluten. Yeah. But I they're mean, also not needing it. It's still a good beer either way. And the fact that it is gluten free does open it up for other people who would like to enjoy beer. But you know. Yeah. Unfortunately, that canned gluten gets in the way. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I like the name of it too. Meteor shower. The uh, the actual design of the can is really nice. I'm not a big fan of fish, but the way the ghost fish looks, it looks like something that I'd be watching like out of like some kind of anime, maybe. Right, right, yeah, some unique artwork. It looks very cool. It looks almost uh, a little futuristic too, if you ask me. Almost Dungeons and Dragons for like some kind of Sure. Nerd alert! If you look at the monster manual, there could be something that looks like this little thing here. Nerd alert, nerd. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. it is it is just cool and it's unique and it's uh it's different for even being a bit more simplistic in the overall. Uh, image, it, it is just uh, just very cool. And uh, I, I really like the line here, transcend your limits, yeah. you know? 4.8% alcohol, sorry, 4.5% alcohol by volume, and IBU of 18. Very, very low. Very, very, very smooth. Not bitter at all, really, especially for a beer that's got some brightness and some yeah. flavor to it. Um, yeah, not bitter in the least. Really good and flavorful. Uh, very light, very drinkable. Obviously a lower percentage on the alcohol, but Something that you could enjoy uh, several more of because of that. And especially yeah. with food, great parents. Yeah, I really do like it. Well, I think uh, it was like a thing you can say about it. I think so, yeah. yeah. Wait, it's from Seattle. Oh, <laughs> yes, Seattle. Let's yeah. not forget that. Yes. Uh, where from again? Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Somewhere yeah. local. It's in yeah. Washington. Yeah. Uh, maybe the same we can. Brewed in Seattle. There we go. There it is. Yeah. Well, I see, I knew we'd get there. I From the there. Pacific Northwest. Yes, sir. Now, of course, also, I'm just going to say, being a blonde ale, it's also a very light color. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll end on that note. Not light on the burps. Light on the color. Yeah. Oh, but it's great. Well, thank you all very much for watching. We do appreciate it. Uh, we are the Brew Hemus. The Brew Hemus. The newly and, established, newly coined. Yes. We'll catch you all on the flip side. When you crack open another one. That's right. Cheers. Keep your hearts warm and your beer cold. <laughs> <laughs>